Hello, my name is Mordred Viking, and I'd like to welcome you to this stream of Europa Universalis 4. This is the Cradle of Civilization, and we are the Mamelukes still. The year is 1569, and things are, I am sure, afoot. <laughs> uh, but what things? That is a good question. We do have a lot of loans. I think that was from our last war against the Ottomans. Pretty sure. The Ottomans are, right, so the Ottomans are currently embroiled in the, no, it's from when we embraced the uh, technology. So the Ottomans are currently embroiled in the um, League Wars. Uh, the whole of Europe is basically up in fire at the moment as this is actually taking place. I kind of expected the Protestants to be doing rather better than they actually are. I suspect that they're actually going to lose because their leader, uh, Bohemia, is completely occupied. And they do seem to be losing on every front except in Lithuania because Muscovy is on their side. I think the Ottomans are too. So maybe there's going to be a bit of a counterattack, I'm not sure. But either way, I am hoping that the Ottomans get significantly weakened in this conflict. And that we can basically just sweep in and take all their things. Because that would be nice. Anyway, uh, we have rather a lot of military power, which I should probably go and spend. We do still have the... Oh no, Hanafi Scholars. That's not the one I was hoping it would be. Right. We would need to be allied to Tunis in order to get the Maliki. And we don't have that right now. Hey, Bob. Uh, if you type exclamation mark up time, then it will tell you how long I've been streaming. Uh, so, yeah, Tunis. I would like to get an alliance with them, but that is kind of unlikely because they are allied to two of my three rivals. Um... Right, and that's a good point, actually. I should totally say in Discord that I am now streaming. I really need to get a bot and do that automatically. Hello, everyone. Whoops. Now I'm doing the exclamation mark instead of the at sign. Everyone. Now live on Twitch with some EU4 with the mum, Luke's. There we are. Now people know. And I also really need to uh, do a YouTube video saying, hey, this is my stream schedule, come watch. There's a lot of things I need to do, but only so many hours in the day. And far too much Metal Gear Solid. I should, that, there, there might be a correlation with that. Hmm. Anyway, um, we are... what are we doing otherwise? We're still trying to save money. Do we have the mission where we are trying to make money? Our mission currently, as soon as I remember the hell missions are, there they are, is we have no mission. Rival of our rival is Austria. So we should be trying to befriend Austria. Now, I kind of want the Protestants to win because they almost never do. So, well actually, befriending Austria doesn't cost me anything, just a, uh, a slot. So yeah, sure. Alright, we'll improve relations with Austria. We can probably we'll get up to 120 that way. So long as it goes over 100, it is fine. And, wait, was it 120? No, 115. That's fine. We have got a spy network with Karakanulu. Was that who we were fighting? I know we had a fight against someone. In fact, yes, I think it was Karakanulu, not the Ottomans that we fought against last time. Is the Big Magic Frog Dude stream later today? Yes, it is. It is at 10 o'clock p.m. GMT. I was going to do the new Rome DLC, but I never got it, so I'm not going to. I'm going to do Total War instead. And see if I can actually finish that campaign off. I'm kind of intrigued to see what happens in the, the, the latter moments of it. Uh, plus, I just really want to finish a game of Total War Warhammer, because it's such a long game otherwise. Anyway, although it, it doesn't compare to Grand Campaigns, that's another thing I need to do at some point, is Crusader Kings. So I am fabricating on the Ottomans. Have I... Sorry, I'm justifying on the Ottomans. Have I actually fabricated any claims against you? I could get some more. So I can go for Arxe or Jurid. Where's Jurid? I'm not seeing that one. No, it's Cyprus. Huh. That would give me access to a lot of different things. Cyprus would be very strategically useful, actually. So I'm going to go ahead and claim that. And those are getting more and more expensive. So I definitely want some of those. Or I want to have some... Hess will seed castle to Mainz. Uh, yeah, Austria is starting to piece out the people against them, which is not good. 
You haven't destroyed the Ottomans yet. I mean, it's only 1569. It's not that late into the game yet. And the Ottomans are definitely kind of on the back foot. Although they have had a bit of a resurgence lately. And just coming up stronger. But they're at war with half of Europe currently. I mean, the war in Europe is big. It is very, very big. That is the war in Europe right now. Muscovy, Ottomans, France, Denmark, and Northern Europe, uh, Northern Germany, and the Netherlands. Versailles, Poland, Lithuania, Austria, Hungary, the whole of Italy, the whole of the UK, and southwestern Germany. Oh, and Spain. I totally forgot about Spain. Um, so I was really expecting the Protestants to be doing rather better than they are, considering they're Muscovy, Ottomans, and France. Like, the three largest military powers in the world, frankly, at this time, but they're just not doing that well. Although, actually, I'm probably the largest. Who's got the biggest army? That is a good question. The biggest army is currently Ming. Second biggest is the Ottomans. Still, you have 79,000. Well, I guess I have 70,000. And I have manpower, and you don't. And you have mercenaries, and I don't. So, nah. Can I recruit more troops? I can. Do I want more artillery, or do I want more other things? So, currently, my cavalry are in training. Do I have artillery armies, or are they just in these armies? Five and five. I could do with another five artillery, I think. So I can have five stacks, each of you doing... Whoops, no, spread you out. Each of you doing some sieging. Right, the reason I'm saving money right now is to pay off loans. I remember now. Okay, good. So what is the war score in their war? Plus 55 to the Catholic. Oh, man. Protestants are getting hammered. So please go hammer the Ottomans a little bit more. Although, actually, the... Catholics have a much bigger navy, considering they have England, Castile, and basically the whole of Italy. So the Ottoman fleet should be non-existent. How have you still got ships left? Catholics, you have not been doing your job properly. I mean, I have a lot more galleys, so I will slaughter them at sea, as long as I fight them here. Uh, access from Kazan. Are you fighting the Ottomans? Because if you are, you can totally have access. You're at war with Astrakhan. Yeah, that's fine. I will allow it. Oh, right. I did not select the rival of our rival, did I? I should probably do that. So the thing that I'm kind of waiting for is the military technology, which will be January next year. Also, oh, 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 I need to recruit. I'm already recruiting soldiers. I need to spend military development. Uh, how are the merchants feeling about me at the moment? They are pretty chill. But I don't have any way of increasing their loyalty any further, so I'm not going to get the development cost reduction. I'm not going to be able to get an alliance with Tunis. And in fact, if I declare war on the Ottomans, then Tunis will be pulled in. In fact, not having any relations with Tunis is a good thing, because it means that I'm not quite so over my uh, diplomatic relations. Hungary and Poland. Oh, I'm allied to Hungary and Poland. Right, and Poland is getting absolutely squished. I wonder if I can use my great power abilities to strip away the Tunisian alliances with people. The Ottomans? No. With Castile? No. How are you allied with Castile? Uh, you apparently have been for a long time. I'm pretty sure it was the last time that I went to war with the Ottomans I lost that Tunisian one. You haven't got a trade fleet to pill for all the money from India. Again, it's early. It's only the 1500s. Trade ships have only just becoming viable, and piracy definitely isn't until the 1600s plus. And even then, you're going to need, like, um, naval ideas or espionage ideas to make them truly powerful. Okay, so I have definitely been squandering some military points, and I really need to spend them. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo, development... Now, I'm already getting all of the institutions. I'm just double-checking that I don't need to be beefing up institutions. Oh, no, I don't. Is that why I haven't got the technology yet? 18%. Interesting. Hmm... Which explains why this has gone so far over a thousand. I'm an idiot. 
Now, was I boosting institutions anywhere? Probably, I'm just not sure where. Uh, you have 5%. It would be one of the cotton provinces. So let's go ahead and sort this by trade goods and check out the cotton or the cloth provinces. Your institution is what? Zero, zero, zero. You're not mine. Uh, you have got 11. Zero. Zero. So the most likely place that I have been boosting is you. But I have not been boosting you very hard. In fact, I have a feeling I was doing gems most recently. No, apparently not. And what was the other one? It was cloth, wasn't it? No, no, no. Because cloth gives a development cost reduction. That's why I'm looking at these, and so does cotton. No, no, no. Not mine, no. Okay. So I've not been spending development anywhere, which kind of makes sense because I don't have the advantages allowing me to do that. I'm not going to get the cost reduction anytime soon. So I think we're just going to sort this by cost and just start boosting up Baghdad. That seems like a perfectly reasonable place, although you are not one of the best military places. Adana would be the best military place. 37, what's the minimum? 33, I mean it's not a huge amount more. 31, no that's development. Cost is 30, yeah 37 is fine. So we're just going to go ahead and spend some here. And how much are we up to? 44%. So I think we just need to keep on beefing up Adana over time. In order to attract more to you. Now what are the other spread modifiers? Nearby friendly province. Adjacent province has printing press. Adjacent printing press, a loyal clergy. European 20 development capital. Capital of countries, Diplotech 15. I'm not a European country, which unfortunately the Ottomans count as one because Istanbul is on the other side of the Bosphorus. And before we go any further, tea must be had. That should be a fairly familiar break in my videos by now, though. It's like, hang on, tea is required. It's actually quite funny, the number of comments I'm getting at the moment, just like, what kind of tea do you drink, Mordred? Oh, grey. Tea. Oh, grey. Hot. I did actually say that once in Starbucks, and they just burst out laughing. I was so happy you got the joke. Not that I often go to Starbucks. It's not my favourite place. It smells far too much like that terrible, terrible drink coffee. And is overpriced. Anyway, uh, onwards. So there goes my Starbucks sponsorship. How do you take the tea, though? No milk. Absolutely no milk in Earl Grey. That's just blasphemy. Ugh. Why would you ever destroy the lovely, lovely taste of Earl Grey with milk? Do I have, like, a... F Think about what you just said there, Calico. Tea, Earl Grey, hot. Do I have a fridge? I'll let that one sink in. <laughs> Magdeburg's pieced out. Yeah. Catholics are definitely going to win this one. Come on, Ottomans and Muscovy, go die more. Because I really want both of you to go really, really heavily into debt and lose all of your troops. That would be lovely if you could do that. Oh, I thought you meant I was... Because you said, do you have a fridge or just a teapot? And it's like, it's hot tea, so why would I have hot tea in a fridge? <laughs> No, it's just a teapot with a tea cosy. So it stays warm throughout these lovely, lovely streams. I have like five cups worth in that teapot. It's a big teapot. Ah, that's the teapot. Put next to head for scale. It's basically as big as my head. Alright, so the Ottomans are finally fighting a little 
bit. You are taking a lot of attrition. How is your army size doing? You are down to 68,000 and you have 27 mercenaries now. Yes, you are definitely struggling a little bit, which is making me very happy. Right, I need to split you down. I need you six. I need... You. And then honestly, I could do with one additional general. Which is you. Oh, you're quite good. Oh, you are excellent, in fact. Oh, hello. Oh, no, you are one of the guys I already have. Right, you're the one that's been training like a madman. You're the new guy. You are still a 4432. Yeah, it's acceptable. So the other thing I need to do is basically split. A couple of guys off of you. And a couple of guys off of you. And then give the third general to you. And have you train. Group. Third general. Drilling. So that's going to be the three cavalry units to add to the three armies. Then I have three stacks. Boom. Organized. So I can gain a bunch of money and lose some loyalty with the Amirs and gain some with the Merchant Guilds or vice versa and gain stability. I'm actually only on plus one stability. Uh, this is going to piss off the Merchant Guilds, but so be it. So the question here is, am I going to be doing any development cost uh, promotion anytime soon? No, no, I'm not. Uh, oh. Right, because I'm so legalist, I have not been converting these new provinces from the Shia. Although I'm a humanist, so that shouldn't matter quite so much, because I'm going to have very high loyalty anyway. Religious unity, yeah, it's over 100. Excellent. You have a milk problem, I don't have anywhere to put it. I like white tea. Well, when I was at university, I did have a mini fridge which held beer, so I was basically bussy at university. But I have not done that for a while. I started leaking and it was horrible. Just cold water everywhere. In fact, I can make these armies actually the same size. So I go for two more infantry and one more cavalry. And I think that brings me perfectly to my... Oh no, it's still one under. So I was saying infantry, infantry, cavalry. So all of my stacks are going to be 16, 10, 5. And I'm going to create a template saying that now. Because this is pretty cool. So we're going to make this the standard template. I've been kind of waiting for this to happen. There's like a certain point in the game when this becomes viable. 16. I can't believe how many cavalry we have. That's crazy. 10 and 5. So we have 31 stacks. Stacks of 31. Wow, we really do. That's 90 divisions. 90 regiments. 93. My force limit is 79. How am I? There is something dodgy about the maths here. That is definitely 30 units. And I have three stacks of this, so how am I only at 78 regiments? That is 93, right? I don't understand. How? What? City of Mecca. As custodians of the Holy Mosque of Mecca, we are responsible not only for the Holy Shrine, a state that claims this honour is also expected to fend for both the population of the Holy Cities. So we can get that massive national tax modifier reduction, which is horrific. Or the Ulema get a bit pissy and we lose the stability. Honestly, it's kind of worth the stability. Because that lasts for 15 years, and it is horrific. Horrible. But I think you do get bonuses at the end of it. <laughs> bye bye profits. Oh yeah, the other thing which I wanted to show you, which I had not realised at all, and I hope I can show it off right now. I can't because I'm not fully prepared, but apparently advisors now go from level 1 to level 5. They do not go from 1 to 3. So you can still only recruit 1 to 3, 
But if you have a level 3 advisor, you can continue promoting them, and you will eventually get plus 5 uh, Monarch Point advisors, which is mental. It is horrifically expensive, and obviously their, um, their wages will go up. But like the uh, previous law, uh, leader I had, where I was like minus 70% advisor cost or something like that, totally worth it. And I really wish I'd known about that, because I totally would have invested in that. Oh, hey, Dana. So yeah, advisors can now go up to level 5. I don't think that was actually... Like, it doesn't tell you this anywhere. I had to learn this from uh, Ben Magnus, who was also playing E4, and it's like, hey, you can do this. I was like, what? Um, I really need to test that factor, but I'm pretty sure that it's a thing. So yeah, uh, advisors can go up way more. Do level 5. Which also kind of solves some of the problems uh, with monarch points that some nations have. <laughs> so Ming can drown in more points. Oh, yeah. And development suddenly became a whole lot more worthwhile. I mean, development cost reductions. Because that was always one of my problems. Like, I always prioritized it for my custom nations, but ultimately it felt like I didn't do the development increases very often. I've actually done it way more at the Mamelukes than I would ordinarily do. Uh, like the Pale Pirates, I, I did not do it very often. So, yeah. Awesome. Alright, so seriously. This should be... That's only 26. What am I missing? Oh, it's stack units of 5 infantry. Can I edit this now? Right click to delete. I don't want to delete it, I just want to edit it. Alright, do a new one. So, we're doing the standard. Yeah, I know what I was doing wrong. It's 11 infantry, 5 artillery. I was counting the artillery and the infantry together. And 10 cavalry. Aha, that's what it was. So it's units of 26, that, and then makes 78. Alright, there! that That's where the maths works. I was getting confused because those guys are infantry icons, but clearly there's artillery in there too. Protoss and Gerga. As men of great spiritual strength, but also firmly and part of the establishment, members of the Alema sometimes choose to join societal protests. A recent altercation between the local garrison and the urban population of Gerga have attracted the attention of prominent Mufti in the state of Said. So we can move towards mysticism, which will allow me to convert my new... Uh, Shia provinces, or we can move even further towards legalism. It will piss off Said for 10 years. But I kind of like having the legalism because that will at least counter the penalty to taxation that I was getting. Once it's fully maxed out. Although they just released a hotfix and they have tweaked some of this stuff. Was that a hotfix or was that a beta? Let me just double check that. E4 fix patches E4 wiki yes it was released yesterday and it introduced blocked hordes from getting the Sheikh Al Islam events added Spanish and French localization piety and calm are now shown as percentages that's what I was reading differently uh, 78 that's not changed Does it still go down to minus 100, or is it between 0 and 100? No, it's still minus 100. Okay, I don't know how piety has changed as a percentage. I don't understand that. AI will no longer randomly cancel annexation or integration. Unit arrival times accessibility is now larger than one pixel. You must have no provinces outside the British region to be eligible for around the world in 80 years. Fixed a couple of crashes. And some missing text. Mamluk government now doesn't get set to 20 legitimacy when they lose their monarch. Yeah, that's freaking annoying. I've had that more than once. Obviously, hence they fixed it. Religions will no longer spawn more reformation centers than they're allowed to. Fixed age check of heirs and queens were not used by government for. Fixed for another crash. Can no longer promote advisors if you don't have Cradle of Civilization. Okay. Oh, they retroactively added something to the DLC. That's interesting. Haven't seen them do that before. Right, so please tell me how the Ottomans are getting smashed in this war. And Muscovy. In fact, how's Muscovy's armies doing? I am way ahead of the Ottomans. The Ottomans are really starting to hurt. Muscovy is still at 43,000. They have 5,000 manpower and 24 mercenaries. This is definitely the age of the mercenaries. Austria's looking kind of shaky, though. 
But the one that I really want to know about is how many loans they've taken. And there is a way of doing this, and I've forgotten how you do it. I think it's admin rating. So the Ottomans don't have any reductions for loans. They have no loans. Muscovy have got loans. I think it's 0 0.2 per loan, so Muscovy have got two loans. I have five. Because what I'm hoping is that Muscovy takes out enough loans that they will not support the Ottomans in the war when I declare war on them. Although I suspect if I do that right now, then I get dragged into the other war. Oh no, I don't. Wait, you have an alliance with France? Oh, good grief. Well, at least France wouldn't join right now. Muscovy would, but I could probably overcome that, and Tunis definitely would. But this is kind of an opportunity to take Tunis down. The other thing I can do, of course, is attack Tunis, which will drag in Castile and the Ottomans. I can basically knock Castile out of this war with my galleys, because we'll be fighting them in the Mediterranean. Although they could still land over there, which would be problematic. Uh, I basically just... Oh, that's a big fight. Which France is winning. Well, that's a big victory. Oh, no. These guys are going to arrive. That's a huge fight. France lost. No! Damn you, Austria. Saving the day. Harsh caravan raided. I will gladly lose the legitimacy. Thank you very much. And we are now ahead of time in military tech, so we could totally take that. You're on tech 14, we're on tech... Probably 14 too. No, we're on 13, they've already gone up. Ah, I don't like being behind the Ottomans. Oh, Adana! I would like to feed you some more development. Although you are probably quite a lot more expensive. Where are you? Except I shouldn't do this while the uh, merchants are upset. That, where is Adana? Oh, I know it's there, but how much does that cost? Oh, 72 at the moment. Ouch. Are the merchants still pissed off with me? Yes, and they will be for a little while longer. Well, at least the minimum... I was going to say the minimum loyalty for the Ulema and Amirs is now 60, but that does not seem to be the case. It just reduces slower. Austria has accepted peace with Bremen. Ravensburg, yeah. Austria's won that. Ottomans being spy network. Yeah, if the Ottomans declare war on me now, that would be a problem, because Poland's been the one Catholic nation that's actually taken a pounding in this war. How is Poland's armies looking right now? That is not the right one. That's army comparison. Where's the army itself? There it is. Lithuania still has manpower, still has troops, and Poland... ...does not. <laughs> Pomerania's gone. Ooh, Pomerania is one of the big ones. Ish. France is still fighting. No, that's Naples. It's the fact that Bohemia is completely occupied that is bad. I thought it could just be that the, the big guys just haven't arrived yet, but the war in, in Germany seems to be going badly. Brandenburg is still holding out, kind of. Adana. <laughs> yes, it's Adana, okay? <laughs> yes, Dana, it's called Adana. There is Adana there, a single one. Singular. My Sultan, Austria, accepted peace with Denmark. That's another of the big guys because you have Norway. Who side's Burgundy on? Trier is out. Lubeck is out. That's one of their money bags. Uh, Burgundy is on France's side, interestingly. And none, none of this stuff has been occupied. I mean, France has been fighting a two-front war against... Spain. In fact, France is advancing into Spain. Yeah, they just need to wait for the, the three fringe big guys to arrive. Like, everything in Germany itself has been kind of bad. 